Right, I'm forgoing one week of the, the series that I've been doing on Sunday evenings with the leadership qualities and characteristics. And we're going to come back to that, but I wanted to preach on something else. The good thing about pastoring a church is that you don't have to follow any rules like that. If you want to preach on something, go ahead and preach on it. That's why last Wednesday I just skipped over that Bible study and, and preached on uh, George Bush's funeral and his death and, and all that. So there's no, um, there's no actual rules when it comes down to what I can and can't preach on. As long as I'm preaching out of the Bible, then, then we're doing good. So tonight we're going to preach on something. I'm hoping that tonight's teaching is just going to be very practical for you. Now, you've probably heard many sermons in the past. I bring it up from time to time and I preach entire sermons on it here on the wickedness of the world and especially the world's entertainment and things like movies and music and you know talk about this over and over again but um, I want to try to help you tonight to give you kind of practical teaching and applications on how to avoid a lot of this stuff and and what to do with your time because oftentimes you'll find yourself just getting sucked into some things that you might even know are wrong and bad, but you kind of think, well, this isn't that bad, and you kind of don't know what else to do anyways. Um, there, there's quite a few things. I just want to give you just some guidance uh, from the Bible on, on things that we can do to avoid getting into sin and how to spend your time doing godly things. And the first thing that I'm going to mention we find here in the book of Proverbs, jump down to verse number 20. The Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Who you surround yourself with, who you choose to be friends with, who you choose to be spending your time with on a regular basis is going to have a big impact on your life. It, they will rub off on you no matter where you're at. I mean, even at work. I mean, everyone has to go out to work, or at least many of you, you need to go out to work. I have a job, go out to work. People will rub off on you. Now, at least in that environment, everybody should be busy doing their job. So you shouldn't have some major impact, hopefully, to your spiritual life, to your walk with God. Because, I mean, I know that's what I do. Oftentimes, I'll just put on a set of headphones. And now I just listen to, like, Christmas music or some hymns or whatever, stuff like that just to zone out and to kind of tune everybody else out and just focus on my work. You may not have an environment like that. You know, maybe a little bit different, but the, the goal is to try to just get your work done and work. And if you're busy working, then it's hard to find yourself getting a problem. And that's one of the main themes. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. Keeping yourself busy like doing something productive, doing something good is going to be one of the best things you can do to keep yourself from getting into sin and getting involved with the things of this world. Um, the Bible says, you know, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So basically, you know, a sure way not to sin is to walk in the spirit. Now, nobody walks in the spirit 100% of the time. We still do have the flesh. It's the struggle. But what that tells us is that the more time that you can actually spend doing things that you know are godly things, it's guaranteed to keep you from things that are not that good. Now, I understand too. Look, I have the flesh. I know what it's like to get burned out on, say, reading the Bible. Especially if you're single, you're young, you've got maybe a little bit extra time on your hands because you don't have the time that it takes to you know, have a family and just all the other work involved with that. Maybe you have a little bit of extra time. And I know you could really only spend so much time reading the Bible before you're just like, my head hurts. <laughs> you, know, you, can't, you can't really receive much anymore past that. You try listening to it. So I'd like to help you. And, and you know, the first point is... Your friends, who you choose to spend time with. Is that, you, you know, if you've got a lot of time in a day and you're, you're hanging out with different people, you're going doing different things, take heed to this warning. The Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Try to find people from church, people who are like minded believers, to spend your time with. You know, you have other people who believe similarly. It's going to be a lot easier, a lot less of a, of a draw 
into doing things that you already know aren't right. You know, when you got a bunch of worldly friends, they're saying, hey, we're all going to the movies. We're going to see this, this movie or whatever. And it's some way. I mean, they're all wicked movies out there these days. Anyways, I'm not going to prove that to you tonight. Uh, that's another sermon for another time. But if you don't want to end up doing that, you know, if you don't have a bunch of friends that are all about that, it's going to be a lot less likely for you to be tempted to go. But if, on the other hand, if you're spending time with some other people who love God, love the Bible, who, who like those same things, who have the Holy Spirit because they're, they're children of God, those are the people who, you know, that's, you're going to rub off on each other and, and, and kind of have a little bit more accountability also. I remember there was a time when um, early on when I was still going to church, or when I first started going to church, the Faithful Word Baptist Church, and I was trying, you know, growing a lot spiritually and, and really, you know, doing my best, trying to get rid of things uh, that, I, that I knew were wrong. It's a process, too. And, you know, don't, don't, don't feel bad if, like, you still have some things in your life that you know you need to get rid of. Like, just deal with it, right? But, but there is, you know, there's time of, of growth that people need to experience. So... One of the things for me, an example that comes to mind is when I finally realized, because one of the, we were talking about this last song with uh, Brother Devin this morning, you know, music has, has always been a big part of my life, and especially the worldly music, it's been, like, it's just been part of me almost for as long as I could remember since I was young. I always loved music. And I, when I got into music, I got into it, you know, the posters and the concerts and the t-shirts and even down to reading books about these guys and, you know, everything I could, getting the magazines, the rocker magazines, and just reading all this stuff and just wanting to know everything about it and really being into it. I needed to make a clean break from that stuff when I realized, because for, for a long time I knew it wasn't right. It doesn't take, you know, some of the music especially, it doesn't... <laughs> You don't have to even read the Bible cover to cover one time to realize they're talking about some really wicked things. You know, when they're glamorizing the booze and the fornication and adultery and, you know, all these things that are just so apparently wrong. You know you shouldn't be listening to that stuff anyways. But one of the things that I had to do, because this was a real problem, I mean, I got the sound system in my car. I had everything just, I mean, I loved the music. I had the bootlegs, I had all that stuff, right? But when it came down to it, is I had to make a decision and say, well, what are you going to do? Right? And I was thinking, you know what, I, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Because another thing that I noticed just through, through practice, when I would start listening to some things, and you could say, you know, on a scale of what's the most sinful, is listening to music like the most sinful thing you could do? No. It's not. Okay, it's, it's not. But, but it does have a deeper impact on you that you really need to be aware of. Because oftentimes we'll, we'll tend to think, well, this isn't really that big of a deal. I mean, I'm not going off and committing fornication. Yeah, I'm listening to someone sing about it, but like, I'm not going and doing that. And, you know, praise God, maybe, maybe you, you've cleaned up a lot of things. You're doing really well in general, but you're allowing this stuff to come in. One of the things that I noticed, because this was my mindset, that's how I know... <laughs> This is how I know it. there's no way I'm alone in thinking that way. And they're like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Every single time, though, even after I already kind of knew that this stuff was wrong, I shouldn't be listening to it, every time that I would start listening to it, I'd always end up getting involved in other sin. Even sin that's not, not like one-to-one -one related, it's the mindset, one, I think music is very powerful, but it's also this mindset of just allowing for sin, like knowingly allowing sin is going to lead you into doing other sins that you didn't even really want to do anyways, but it's gonna, you're going to be a lot more likely to do that stuff. So what I had to do, and what I recommend doing, I th this actually worked really well, because I thought about it, and there's a lot of value in it and stuff too, but I was like, you know what? I don't want someone else to have this problem, because it really is a plague. It's like if you have a bunch of booze, right? Maybe you have top shelf, really expensive Booze. Booze is poison. What does that say about you if you're going to go and sell? Hey, do you want to buy this poison? 
Is the money really worth that much to you? You want to ruin their life? By giving them that poison, giving them that drug? What if it were drugs? You got to just get rid of that stuff. Nobody ought to have it. Because I thought about selling all my meat. Well, some other people are like, if they want it, they'll go down and buy it at the record store anyway, so why don't I make some money off it? Well, the reason why is because you shouldn't be participating in evil. That's why. And you were foolish by spending your money on it. I was foolish by spending my money on it to begin with. I never should have done it. It was a waste. It was worse than a waste because it actually had an impact on my life spiritually, a negative impact. It's not good. So what I did was I took a chisel and I took a hammer and I smashed and destroyed because I didn't even want someone to dig it out of the garbage can. And I'm glad that I did that because one of the things by doing that, what that did, that helped me to distance myself from that. In a similar fashion that, you know, after you get saved, you ought to get baptized. But once you get baptized, I've noticed this with many people. I've baptized personally in my own life. I've seen in other people's lives that once you get baptized, it really kind of gets you started spiritually going and, and dying to self and walking in the new man. It's symbolic of all of that. But it really does help you to do that. I know when I got baptized, things changed in my life when I decided to take that step of obedience and I was really much more focused on serving the Lord. And in a similar way, when I, when I took the chisel and the hammer to, my, to that music set, really cut that out. It's like, it's like cutting off a limb. And that's kind of how it felt when I was doing it because I was looking at this stuff and going, oh man, I even had the cassette tapes, right? I was pulling the, the tapes out, you know, and maybe that's a little bit old school for, for some of the people here. You don't know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, the cassette tapes and the CDs. Now, everything's MP3 now. It's, a lot e it's harder to do that, right? Because you could just, like, delete. But make sure you get out of the recycle bin. Don't, don't leave it in there to just undelete it later. Like, get, get rid of it. Wipe it clean. It's not going to have the same impact, though. But I don't know if you're willing to go and smash your computer because it's not the computer's fault. But <laughs> I see some head shaking. No, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't even know how I started getting down. That wasn't even in my notes at all. <laughs> my first point is, is not to be a, hanging out with a bunch of fools. I don't know how I got on the music thing. That's all right. We'll get back to my, to my plan of action here. Being a companion of fools, the Bible says you're going to be destroyed. If you hang around with wise men, that's going to make you wise. You're going to become wise. You're going to, you know, those people and yourself, you know, the iron sharpened the iron, the Bible says, and you're going to be there, you know, kind of supporting each other. And it also provides you with a little bit more accountability, right? You're going to be, oh, I know where I started thinking about something else. Um, and here, here's what I mean by accountability. You may have friends out in the world just in general, like I did. I have, I have friends growing up, friends that are just worldly friends, that they don't look at things the same way as people who are regularly going to church. So things that in here, you know, you hear about, they're going to be looked down upon, it's sinful. Like I said, you'll go in the movies, there's the music and stuff. But these other worldly friends, they're not even going to think anything of it, Right? So it provides you a much safer place to go if you go and hang out with these guys and you already want to get involved in some things that you, you know, your flesh still likes, I want to do this stuff. It's easier to do that stuff when you're hanging out with everyone else that's already doing that stuff. But if you're going and choosing to spend your time with someone from church or with someone who's spiritually grown or someone who also understands the same thing, you're going to be a little bit embarrassed or ashamed to, to get involved in those activities because you're going to know, you know you shouldn't be doing it. And that'll help you to be hanging around with, that, with those type of people. I remember it's a real silly example, but um, like I said, when I first was going to, going to church, there was someone that I, I had run into at lunchtime. You know, I was at work. And I was hanging out with my work buddies. And, you know, it was, um, 
not that I was doing anything wrong. Like I wasn't, I mean, it wasn't any bad behavior or something like that, but I was kind of just, just talking the way I normally talk with them. And I can't, I, nothing that sticks out to me as being kind of sinful. But then there was a, an older gentleman that was, that was going to church and he saw me and recognized, hey, brother Dave, how you doing? And inside I felt a little bit embarrassed because like, you know, he called me Brother Dave in front of these other guys. That, you know, it was just kind of, kind of weird. But being around those people, it's good for you. You know, and, and he was—he wasn't really my peer. He was, he was much older than I was. But hanging out with people that that um, that are right-minded. I mean, he was in the right mind. He is in the spirit. Doesn't matter. He was at work too. He was on his lunch break. But he was much more grown spiritually than I was. Right? I mean, we ought to be walking in the Spirit or walking in a way where we're going to be pleasing to God and we don't change the way that we act, whether we're in church or out of church. Right? I mean, you're, you're, we're, not, we're not trying to put on a front. You're not trying to, to be someone you're not. But I understand also when you're growing, you know, these things, you're, you're trying to eliminate one aspect of your life that, that isn't that good. So there is that, that period where you're kind of going back and forth a little bit. But the best way to, to overcome all that is to spend your time with the people who, who are, you know, spiritually, more spiritually grown than you and things like that, you know. Um, and ultimately, like, like now, I'm at the point where I'm not embarrassed. I, I love running into people out in public, you know, people from church or something. Of course, I'm going to be like, hey, how's it going? Or I see you out there. I'm not going to hide from somebody. I mean, that'd be ridiculous, of course, <laughs> for me, for me now. <laughs> but, you, you know, back way early on when I was just kind of getting, getting going and, and, and spiritually growing and things like that, you know, I, I understand that. But you have a choice to make. And see, I'd much rather be friends with that guy. Because he's going to be helpful. He's going to help me out. He cares about me. He loves me being a brother in Christ, as opposed to just some unsaved colleagues that, yeah, you can have a few laughs with, and you can talk about worldly things and just kind of get your mind off of the things of God. But it's not going to be a big benefit. Now, I'm not saying that my colleagues were fools. You know, I wasn't like spending time with a companion of fools of just, just you know, like really wicked people. Because that's what this verse is talking about. I'm just kind of bringing up an example of something that, that happened to me in life, in my life. But um, definitely you don't want to be a companion of fools, people who are into like, you know, really wicked things and foolish people. Because that, you will be destroyed. Even if you're not doing those exact things, just being a companion, being around other people doing that stuff, you're going to get in trouble. It's like uh, going out to a bar, like you say, well, I'm not drinking. You go out and hang out in a place where there's a bunch of foolish people doing foolish things and uttering perverse things out of their mouth because they're drunk, and a place where an environment where people are prone to get in fights and people are prone to have violence and prone to just do other things, prone to commit adultery, prone to commit fornication. What good's going to come of that? You got no business being around places like that. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Let's look at Psalm 101. Turn to Psalm 101. This is typically a passage you'll find preaching against the, the movies and the music and the Hollywood and things like that for good reason. Because we want to keep ourselves pure. We want to make sure we can overcome our flesh. We want to make sure we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh and overcome these, these areas of our life that, that seem to always creep in. Well, memorizing Psalm 101, I think, is another good, <laughs> good use of your time, especially if you find yourself having extra time. Start doing Bible memory. Start doing Bible memory. You don't have to do the stuff that we do in church, but if you, have, if you have particular problems that you know are problems for you, find the passages in the Bible that talk about that 
Ask me about where those passages are. You don't have to tell me that's a problem specifically for you. Just, just say, hey, Pastor Burton, where does the Bible talk about this or talk about that? I'll help you with that. And then you go and take that at home. And like I said, you don't have to tell me that this is your personal problem or anything like that. You could go and then commit that to memory. And the reason why I say commit it to memory is because the Holy Spirit will bring those verses back to your remembrance during the times where you're tempted, where you're thinking, I want to do this. Or maybe you're not making the decision, but you already start going the wrong path. The Holy Spirit's going to be like, wait a minute. Don't forget this. Remember this. Remember what you already memorized. Let's read Psalm 101. It's a real short psalm. Verse number one, the Bible says, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. And just right off the bat with singing, right? So I'm going to sing unto you. I'm going to sing of mercy and judgment. I'm going to sing unto you, Lord. Do you think that's singing highway to hell? Or I have friends in low places. That's not what that's singing. He's singing a song unto God. I'm singing of mercy and judgment. But let's keep reading here. Verse number two. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And this is talking about being at home. So I'm going to walk within my house with a perfect heart. Why is that important? Because when you're at home, nobody sees what's going on. Especially if you live by yourself, nobody knows what's going on. You're behind the confines of your walls. You can do whatever you want. And no one else is going to see or know what you're doing. Well, you know what? There is someone who sees and knows what you're doing, though. There's always someone who sees and knows what you're doing. It's not Santa Claus. It's God. And if you have this type of mindset, like, like what David is writing here in Psalm 101, this will help you to be right with God then. And he's saying, look, even when I'm within my house, I want to have a perfect heart. He says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Why? Because you start off by looking at the wicked thing. The next thing you know, you're doing the wicked thing. You may think you're never going to do it, but the more you allow your eyes to feast on it, the more those thoughts are going to get in your head. And the more those thoughts are in your head, it leads to action. The things that you think about, the things that you meditate on, the things that you put in front of your eyes is ultimately going to end up being the things that you do. It's evident. Look at the divorce rates. Look at the fornication that goes on. Look at the adultery that goes on. And look at how many people are sucked in to the television and what are they watching all day long? It's reflection. They're, they're getting this stuff in their mind all the time. And then what used to be known as extremely wicked and adulterous and, and nobody even wanted to talk about it, it's now just an affair. Oh, I had an affair. Oh, yeah, we're going to get divorced. Oh, yeah, we're going to split the, you know. Yeah. It's just not a big deal. Why? Because it's been normalized. Because the more you look at things and see things, the more it just becomes accepted and just part of life. Well, it's just part of life. Yep, I'm divorced now. Oh, I'm just moving on. That's what it's become today. It used to, <laughs> you, believe it or not, it used to not be that way. At all. Not even close. You know, it used to, not, it used to be that it was weird when single guys would live together. Like, that was really looked down upon. You'd be kind of questioned going, like, you're doing what? You're living with who? Why would you do that? You're trying to hide that you're a homo or something? Because that, that's the way the culture was in this country not that long ago. Now it's just not a big deal. I mean, you got guys rooming up and, and whatever going to college, getting away from the parents, and just getting into all kinds of wickedness. And it's normalized. And, and what the movie does, movies do is they glamorize it. I mean, how, how many movies are there, are there out there about college life? I mean, going way back, going back to the 70s and 80s, all the way through today, 
of just the drunken parties and the fornication and, and everything just being glamorized. In, in many cases, it's ruining people's lives. Literally, I mean, you, people are making decisions, going off to college and just having fun. Decisions that make an impact on them for the rest of their lives. Whether they're getting diseases or having children out of wedlock or, you know, killing themselves through alcohol poisoning or whatever. I know, I know someone who damaged his brain by taking too many drugs in college. And now he's like a, um, like a child, like a teenager. Parents have to take care of him. He can do basic things, you know, but he's like a kid. Because he fried his brain. He literally fried his brain doing drugs. Normal guy, went away to college, fried his brain. But he was just having fun, right? I mean, isn't that what, the, what it tells you in the movies? He wasn't doing anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, he was doing something wrong. Don't let that influence you. Let's keep reading here in Psalm 101. Verse number three, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. There's another problem that we have. People don't have a proper hatred of the work of them that turn aside. The people that, that are not godly in the work that they do they have a proper hatred for that. People have more sympathy over wickedness than they have hatred of the wickedness. You need to hate the wickedness because of, why? why? Because you hate things that destroy people. I hate alcohol. I hate drunkenness. It ruins families and lives and, and children and, and everything else. I hate it. I hate the wicked music industry. I hate the wicked movie industry. I hate those things. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. The wise person is going to say, you know what? I don't want to have anything to do with that. I hate it, and I'm not going to get close to it. Stay away. And within my house, even though no one else can see, I'm going to make sure that I don't have that stuff clinging to me. Verse 4, a froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. And this, and this goes to the, to the point of, from Proverbs, you know, companion, a fool shall be destroyed. So I'm not going to know a wicked person. I'm not going to be buddies and friends with some wicked person. Verse number 5, whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. I don't have anything to do with that. Some guy who's privately going around and talking about, about his neighbor and talking about people behind their back. I'm going to cut him off. Nothing to do with you. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. This is someone who's proud and covetous. But which, by the way, is also one of those sins in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that says, you know, within church, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Covetous. Drunkards. Don't have anything to do with them. They're a brother in Christ. Verse number six, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. So here's who who's he's choosing to be friends with, who he's choosing to spend his times with. The faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. It's a great psalm. Memorize it. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I don't want that cleaving to me. I'm not going to laugh at their entertainment. I'm not going to get involved with, with anything that they have to do. I hate their work. I hate the way they subtly make abominable things okay and accepted. I hate that. Turn, if you would, to Ezekiel chapter 16. Now, 
You say, what do you do for entertainment then? What do you do with your time? You say, I, I understand, Pastor Burzens. These are... I get it. You know, I can see that these are, these are a waste of time or they're coming from wicked people. But then what do you do? There's a lot of things to do. One of the things you do is grow up. You know, when I was a child, I spake like a child. I understood as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Everybody deals with different stress in their life. And there's nothing wrong with, with having some time to just relax, right? And, and kind of let your mind just, just relax for a little bit. But at the same time, in such the, of a rich culture that we have, and rich, I mean just wealthy, right? Like, like people have so many of their needs already met. You don't really have to work as hard as people have had to work throughout history just to make ends meet. We have a lot of wealth. So it's become standardized and normalized to just have lots of entertainment at your fingertips and that kind of becomes what life is about. And if that's the case with you, you need to rethink your priorities. There was a time in my life where my, what, what my life was about in a, in a sense, maybe not entirely, but I love the music. So I'm always looking at the concerts that are coming. I want to go out and I want to see the live music and be a part of those events and, and see who's coming to town and make sure I get there and get my seat and get involved in this stuff. And that was, that was a big deal for me. And going to the record stores, which I don't know if they have record stores anymore, and trying to find, you know, what do they got? Do they got anything cool or special? And they're like just spending time doing all that stuff. And it's just a big waste of time. There's plenty of things that you can do that, one, are not wicked things, and they don't even have to all be spiritual things, right? Now, the spiritual things are the best things, but like I said, I understand there's only so much Bible you can read. Sometimes there's only so much prayer you can do. There's only so much soul winning you can do in a day. I mean, the, the best thing to do is just always do spiritual things, always. I'm not that perfect. I don't know anyone. I don't, maybe there are people out there that are. I praise God. I hope so. I really do. I hope, I hope there's people that can just always be walking in the Spirit. That'd be great. That's what, that, that would be a good goal. But in the meantime, for things, you know, there's, there's other activities you can do. Just physical activities. Go hiking. Go, you know, go out and do something is kind of what I'm saying. There's other hobbies that you can get involved with other than just sitting down and just being entertained. How about picking up a hobby where you create something or do something or build something? That way you could get even other benefits anyways. Maybe you're building something. You could sell stuff then too. Why not? Why not do something actually productive? There's plenty of hobbies you can do that aren't going to require a lot of work or effort either. Or if you just want to do something that's kind of like, well, I just want to relax and kind of settle my brain a little bit. Yeah, but there's some real fun things that you can do that are not wicked at all, that don't involve turning on a screen in front of you. I mean, believe it or not, those screens those that, that have the images coming up on the wall, you know, with the thousands of channels that you can hook up to satellites and just get whatever you want put in front of your face at any given moment, they haven't been around very long. I don't know if you knew that. Right? It's kind of a new thing. And for thousands of years, nobody had that at all. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I don't think those people just sat around and twiddled their thumbs going, well, I don't know what we do. And until the TV came along, no one had any idea what to do. And now all of a sudden it's, wow, how do you, how do you not watch it? And, you know, I, I understand the mindset. I used to think it was weird when I heard people say, like, you don't watch TV? Like, what? I remember I was like that. Like, what do you mean you don't watch TV? 
Because I had like five shows that I watch. Yeah, I keep up with it. Like, you got to, I got to watch this, and I got this DVR, and I got that recorded, and I, you know, yeah, keep up with this stuff. And then I'm watching football games and baseball games, and what do you mean you don't watch TV? Yeah. But guess what? I don't watch TV. No, I will, I'll be honest with you, I will watch some documentaries from time to time. There's a few things that I'll, that I will turn on, but it's not like, it's not like watching the, television every day like people I mean that's that's a habit that a lot of people get into there's plenty of things to do and I recommend if you have a problem with watching it just you know what unplug it get rid of it you don't need it you'd be amazed at how much you can do with your time that's actually good and profitable but I will I were in Ezekiel I, I will give you this warning though what anytime you want to get sin out of your life and you want to start doing things a little bit different have a plan on what you're going to do and replace things with. I always recommend replacing your sin. So for me, it was the music. So I'm listening to things. I had to replace that with something because I didn't want to have a void of just nothing. Now, I didn't want that. That's for sure. But the easy replacement for that was how about some good music? Because I still love me. I love music to this day. I love music. But now my tastes have changed. I like the right music now as opposed to the world the music. I still love the music, though. I love listening to music. I love singing songs as much as I did before. But you're listening to the right things now. And uh, so we replaced it. I replaced what I would listen to with preaching and audio, Bible audio, which, by the way, I don't, did you see that out there, Brother Carter? Is it, you got one of those? All right. We, we've got, I, do we have any left? Is there one left maybe out there? You got them both? They're both gone? All right. Well, we'll get more. Okay. If you, you want an audio Bible, we'll get you one. Listen, listen to the Bible on audio. Listen to preaching. Listen to, to, to hymns, CDs. We got, we, got, we got a few Christmas CDs out there. If you like Christmas music, <laughs> I, th I think we could, we could part with one or two of those if you wanted to get one of those for your car and for your home. Go ahead and, and take one of those. But... Um, Replace it with something because <coughs> when you don't have something to do with your time and you become idle, that is actually a very dangerous place to be. Ezekiel 16, look at verse number 49. The Bible says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. This shows us how Sodom got to the point where they, where they ended up at. These are the things that Sodom had before Sodom went full-blown Sodomite. Before they went full-blown reprobate. How did they get to that point? Well, they were rich. They, had, they were increased with wealth. Remember, that was the well-watered plain that Lot, when, when Abraham split from Lot, he went towards the rich area. He went towards the nice part of town and, and really went that way. And that, of course, that's where Sodom was, was in those well-watered plains. And um, that's where the fullness of bread comes in. They had, they had no lack of anything. That's also where pride ties in, too. Right? People who have a lot of wealth, a lot of money, have a tendency to kind of be full of themselves. Pride is a horrible sin. We'll watch out for that. But then it says the other, the other thing, the other factor that they had was abundance of idleness. They just had a bunch of free time. Not only did they have this wealth and, and, and lots of bread and everything, but they also just had a bunch of time on their hands. See, when you have a bunch of time on your hands and, and no clue on how to spend it, it's really easy to get yourself involved in some problems because then you're just going to be left to the whims of your heart. And the Bible says the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it? We got this fleshly body. Your, your flesh is going to be like, hey, I know what we can do. <laughs> you wake up, oh, I don't know what I got to do today. I, you know, I had to go to work today, but work is canceled. I don't know what I'm going to do. Your flesh is going to come up with lots of ideas. And you start getting more in tune with, with what your body wants you to do. The sinful flesh wants you to do. If you don't have a plan on how to deal with that. 
So you need to make sure you're not idle, not just doing nothing. Have a plan, have something ready to go. And like I said, you need to have a fallback plan of, hey, if I, if I have and when I have this time, I have other projects that I'm working on. Right? When time opens up for me, I've got other projects. I, there's, there's some videography stuff that I want to do. There's a thing about the church. How about that? Think about other things that you can do that can help out here. If you need something, right? I mentioned that this morning. Hey, you need help wanting to, to, to do things to help out more of the church? Let me know. I've got a lot of things. And these can be things that you have, you know, in your back pocket, so to speak, for when you have that extra time when you're not quite sure what you should be doing, when you want to say, yeah, I don't really want to indulge in, in the world. I've got something for you to work on. And guess what? It's going to be fulfilling. Yeah, the TV can give you a few laughs, right? You can laugh at some stupid joke. You can laugh at people making a mock out of sin. You can laugh at the flaming faggot that's acting all girly and think that that's real funny and desensitizing you to how extremely wicked and perverted they are. You can do that and be nothing gained by that, but rather grow worse. Or you can actually do something productive. It might be a little bit more work than just sitting on your rear but by the time you get done with it, you can have produced something that might be of value to other people. And that, that, guess what? That's going to give you a feeling of accomplishment and fulfillment and joy. And that's going to make you happier. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life, especially you know, in the past, where, where I've spent long hours watching TV. I remember spending like all day on Saturday, occasionally, doing nothing but watching television. Boy, what a feeling of emptiness. <laughs> You're done. It's just like, what did I do today? <laughs> You're like, well, I made myself some food, right? And I didn't even want to do that because I was wrapped up in whatever I was watching. I had to do that. Like, well, I got that accomplished. The dishes are still in the sink. But, <laughs> you know, what a waste. It's a, so many hours in the day, too. The Bible says, um, you know, we need to redeem the time. Actually, let's turn there. Ephesians chapter 5. And especially for the younger people out there, whether you're kids or young adults, don't, don't skip over what I'm going to say. Don't, don't blow it off. Because I've heard this my whole life. And it didn't ring true until a little bit later in my life, till where I'm at now, but your time really is valuable. There's going to be a lot of things, potentially, that you're going to wish you had done that are good things when you had the time to do it. The older you get, the faster time goes. It, it goes faster and faster and faster. The older you get, the more obligations you have, the more responsibilities you have, especially if you have a family, you have kids to feed, you got all this stuff going on. You get busy. You don't got to worry about idleness anymore. But now all of a sudden, all the things that you'd wanted to do that you didn't end up really doing because, eh, I got some other things to do. I could just go be a fool. Now you don't have the time to do that stuff anymore. I mean, I think about the languages that I could have learned. I think about the just, just projects that I could have done. More education I could have gained. Practical stuff. Instead of just going out and being a fool, I could have been learning you know, more uh, woodworking and, and mechanics and just, just other things that are going to be great in, in life. Just to have knowledge. You don't have time for all that. Use your time wisely. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse number 11. The Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 
for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See, you ought to be different than the world. And don't walk as the fool walks. Don't go down the same path that they do. Don't do what everybody else does. It's easy to do that because everybody's doing it. Put a little bit more thought into how you're going to spend your time than just going along and doing what everyone else is doing. Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God has you here for a reason. And it's not just to spend your life as a vacation. It's not why we're here. We've got work to do. We've got a job to do. Let's grow up and do it. Start, start becoming a, a valuable servant. And, I, and I'll tell you what, because most people, you run to entertainment because you want to feel good. That's why you do it. You watch that movie because it, it, you go through some emotions. You get some laughs. You get some suspense. You get some whatever. That is very, very temporary. And it's not going to leave you with anything lasting at all. Even the laughter, it's just, you know, that mirth is just, it's here and gone. But, but I'll tell you that, you know, some things don't go away. The joy that you get through helping other people doesn't go away. It can start to fade, but you know what? The rewards that you earn don't go away. When you, when you minister to other people and you invest time doing work that, that can help a lot of other people, it's invaluable. Last place we turn, look at Romans chapter 13. I'm just going to close on this point. Romans chapter 13. One last tip. From Scripture, to keep yourself from doing those things that maybe you know are wrong from... from you know, getting involved in, in some sin or just, just to overcome your flesh. Start reading verse number 11, Romans 13, the Bible says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. This is figuratively talking about waking from sleep. It's like, wake up. Now it's time to wake up. Don't just be asleep in in the world doing nothing. He's saying our salvation is nearer now than when we believed. He's not talking about the salvation of your soul. He's talking about the full salvation of body, soul, and spirit, everything. The completion of the redemption of your bodies that God purchased. He's saying it's nearer now than it, than it was then. And we got, I got saved 20 years ago. A lot closer now to the redemption of, of my body than it was then. Awake. Verse number 12, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. It's time to get up. It's time to do work. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Don't put yourself in a position is what that means. Making provision for the flesh is you're giving your flesh an opportunity to continue in the flesh. Don't give yourself that opportunity. That's a fool, one of the foolish things I did after I did quit drinking. I vowed to God I would never drink again. And, and praise God, to this point, I've kept that vow. But one of the foolish things I did was still continuing to go out to places that serve alcohol. Now, I didn't fall by drinking, 
But what I was doing was making a provision for the flesh because I'm surrounded by other people. And again, alcohol is just one of the sins that was one of my problems. I know it really well. When you go out to those environments, what happens is you've got people going, hey, have a shot. Hey, I'll get you a beer. Hey, it, there's a pressure being put on you by other people who are drinking that they want you to join them. I used to be just like that. It's just, it's what people do when they're involved in sin. Hey, you come and get involved with us. We're all doing this. Why don't you come and be a part of this too? Now, I didn't do it a whole lot, thankfully, because if I did continue to do that, I probably would have just backed off on my vow to God. And then how scary would that be? Breaking a vow to God. It'd be better not to vow than to, than to vow and not pay. That's one example, but there's many, there's many ways that you can make provision for your flesh. Just having the subscription to cable TV, you're making provision for the flesh. You say, yeah, but I don't turn it on anymore. Possibility is always there. You know, and, and that's not as bad. Maybe, maybe some people have a problem with like pornography. Because that's really bad. That is really wicked. And if that's an issue, you know what? You need to turn off your internet or wherever your source is that, that you're, you're getting involved in that stuff. It's not, I don't care what value you get out of, out of, out of a computer, out of internet, out of anything like that. If you're involved in that, you need to cut that off. Just like cutting off your arm or your leg or something. Because that's really bad. Don't make the provision for the flood. Don't even make it a possibility. Don't make it optional. You're removing, when you, when you have a choice between sinning and not sinning, how about we just remove that choice of sinning? That's what it means not to make provision for your flesh. Let's just, let's just make that as much as not a possibility as possible. Which means surrounding yourself with the good things and just eliminating anywhere where you think, hey, I, I, I might be tempted to do this at some point. Going back to my, my music illustration, if I would have just taken everything and said, well, I'm not going to listen to this stuff anymore, but I'm just going to put it up on the shelf over here. I'm just going to put it out of the way. I'm going to put it over here. It's going to be stored in the garage. I'm going to box it up. It's going to be real hard to get to, but I'm just going to put it back over there. Making provision for the flesh. Because it's always still there. It's just as soon as you want it, it's right there. How about you just cut it out completely and be done with it? This is just day-to-day -day life, practical things. Apply it to wherever it needs application in your life. Look, we all have sin. Everybody does. These truths will help you with that sin to get it out of your life. Keep yourself busy. Busy doing things that are not wicked. Busy doing things that are not going to even give you provision for the flesh. There's plenty of things to do. We need people who know how to play music. You need something to do with your spare time. Try learning a piano. I've got books to teach you how to do it. You don't even have to pay for an instructor to teach you. We'll, have, uh, we'll end up getting a keyboard or piano. We'll get something in here. I'll give you a key. Come in and practice when you've got the free time. I'll help you as much as I can. Make sure you've got a plan for your idle time so you don't become idle. Stay busy. Stay active. Avoid the world's entertainment. Avoid, avoid everything to do with the world as much as possible. Maximize your <coughs> the things that are spiritual. Reading, praying, soul winning, church. Get more active. Get involved. Get friends within church. Start making more friends and, and spend time together. Our heads have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the new birth that we have when we get saved. God, what a wonderful thing it is.
to not just have other people that we can say, um, oh, hey, you're saved too, but, but it's, it goes beyond that, that they've also been born into the same family that, that we've been born into and, and have become our brothers and sisters and that you've created this family uh, through that new birth. God, we thank you for that. I pray that you would please help us to be mindful of that and to, and to help one another out. I pray that you would please give us the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to make good choices. God, I pray that you would please help us to make our vessels, uh, vessels unto honor, not unto dishonor, that we can overcome the sin in our life. And Lord, we need you. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us with that. Pray that you please strengthen us. I pray that you please bring to remembrance any verses that, that, we, uh, that we've read or have memorized uh, <coughs> to us when, when we find ourselves, you know, thinking about doing something that's not right. Lord, help us to live lives that um, where we're, we're constantly reminded that even when we're all alone, that you're still there and you see everything that's done. You know the thoughts of our hearts. God, help us to uh, walk in the Spirit that we might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.